Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our Breath and Light service this evening. Our service tonight is a recognition that there are times in our lives when we need to grieve. In the Old Testament, the word lament means to wail, which is a physical demonstration of the emotions from the loss of human experience. These past few months, there has been loss and grief, but often we do not feel like we have the opportunity or even the validity to express our grief. Tonight, we want you to know that it's important to acknowledge and express your grief, to lament. And as a Beyond Walls Church, we are connected tonight by the same Spirit. We have the same comfort. We have the same hope. We are sharing this time together. And I am praying for each of you as we experience the comfort of God together. Jesus was teaching the apostles that they would be facing great times of mourning and anguish that would lead to joy that no one could take away. We read in John chapter 16, verses 16 to 22, Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this. So he said to them, Are you asking one another what I meant when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep, and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into this world. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. For the past few months, we have had the anguish of a mother giving birth. Tonight, we will acknowledge that pain and anticipate the joy of our salvation when our joy will be complete. A service of light and breath. We rarely think about breathing until we have trouble breathing. Scientists say that we get 99% of our energy from breathing, but we only use about 10% of it. We think of how God created the first human out of dust and then breathed into Adam and gave him breath and life. It tells us something about ourselves. We are vulnerable, fragile, and we have God's life breathed into us. In the Bible, the word for breath is the same as the word for spirit. In Hebrew, this is ruach. In Greek, pneuma. God gives life when he breathes and gives his breath and his spirit. Job 33, 4 tells us, The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. Breath fills us with life and draws us forward. In contrast, grief holds us in place physically. It can feel like a pit in your stomach. Tears that fall without warning, a sunken feeling, flashbacks. Grief can cause us to hold our breath. There is no right way or wrong way of grieving. No matter how we experience grief, breathing will help us deal with the physical symptoms we might feel. Focusing on our breath can even calm our heart rate. When you focus on your breath and breathe deep, you might also feel yourself expanding and making space. In worship, focusing on our breath can also be an invitation to the Holy Spirit. Psalm 104 verse 30 says, When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. God's Spirit brings creation and renewal. So tonight, as we breathe, we make space for God's Spirit to work in us. 
We breathe and make space to grieve. Tonight, we will light six candles. Each time we read a scripture, we'll light a candle. The light of the candles reminds us that God's life-giving Spirit is with us. The Bible assures us that the light cannot be overcome by the darkness. Our grief may feel heavy and insurmountable. We acknowledge the heaviness of grief and we reach for the promise of God's light, where grief meets the life-giving breath of the Spirit. Recreation happens. We have seen this to be true in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Father God, I thank you for the comfort and the hope that we have in the salvation that we've received through our Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, Lord, we are here to gather because we've been through many, many challenging times. And through this, we have seen your blessing. Through this, we have received your comfort. Through this, we have your hope. And Lord, I pray now tonight as we reflect, as we look back, and as we anticipate that those who are grieving will receive comfort. Those who have hurt will be healed. Those who have lost hope will receive hope. And that through this, we will come together as one church, encouraging, helping, and believing as we serve you. As we serve you because of the salvation that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. John 1, 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. On this night, we light the first candle for all that has been lost. We grieve all that holds darkness, the loss of life that we can see in numbers, but have trouble comprehending fully. We grieve the loss of loved ones, friends, brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandparents, spouses, aunts, uncles, cousins, co-workers, associates. We give thanks for the scientists and medical professionals who led the way but are now searching and grasping at clues. We grieve the miscarriages. We grieve with the lonely. We grieve with those who are furloughed, who have lost jobs. We grieve that we cannot gather to see each other. We grieve the verbal assaults and sometimes even physical assaults that we have endured because of how we look. We grieve the brokenness of relationships, all we love and lost, all we have given and not received. We allow ourselves to acknowledge the events that will not happen the dreams that are crushed, the expectations that are humbled, the hopes that are dashed. We grieve places of longing in our hearts. As you light your candle, focus on your breath. Invite the Holy Spirit into your place of grieving. Breathe in through your nostrils. 
Breathe in deep. This is a breath of life. As you breathe out, breathe out the things you wish to release. Notice the rhythm of your breathing. Allow it to be slow, calm, deep. Breathe in life. As we grieve, we can breathe. And as we breathe out, we release our griefs because we do not need to hold them. Christ holds them for us. We embrace things for sweet memories and with expectation because Christ can create something new in us. Psalm 22, verses 1 to 11. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? From the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy and thrown on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They make mouths at me. They wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb, you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. On this night, we light the second candle for all our brokenness. We look around and see an utterly broken humanity. We see racism. We see the live broadcast of the murder of George Floyd. We hear about a spate in suicides. We hear racial slurs hurled at us when we're serving. We are a broken nation. It's on every news channel, newspaper, every time we pick up our devices. The brokenness highlights a place where we already feel cracked. We allow the light from Christ's wholeness to flicker into these places. As you light the second candle, take note of how you are feeling. You might feel nothing. And then maybe a pinch behind your eye. In the Bible, Psalm 56 tells us, that God has collected all our tears in a bottle. As the tears fall, let them remind you that you are the salt of the earth. Even if your task has changed into something else. Right now, your task is to just be with a God who loves you and knows you. Breathe. Your sorrows are known. Breathe. You are loved. Breathe. We acknowledge the pain of loss which makes us feel so broken. Loss of people we love loss of trust in those governing, loss of job, loss of health, loss of security, loss of marriages and funerals that we can no longer attend, loss of school days and graduations, loss of normalcy, loss of little things that bring us joy,
We acknowledge and embrace the pain, O oh God, and we offer it to you, asking that into our wounded hearts and open hands you will place the gift of peace. Shalom. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silence, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the busyness that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Although he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. On this night... We light the third candle to acknowledge our own journey. Our journey is more than this moment. Pause and remember the past week, months, and some years that have been heavy with burdens. We recognize the places where we held darkness already and long before this moment. We place before you, God, the sharpness of memory the sharpness of fear, anger, pain, and old wounds. We place before you, God, the ways that we have forgiven half-heartedly or given half-heartedly. We place before you, God, when we work too much for our pride, for our comfort, to throw our insecurities, for our perfect picture of ourselves, or for approval from another person. We accept and lay before you all the times we walked along in darkness and in knowledge of our own mortality. As you light your candle, remember that it is not all about doing. Remember that on the seventh day, God rested. Allow yourself to rest in this. Count your breath by sevens if it helps you rest. After you light the candle, focus on your breath. Breathe in while counting to seven. Hold your breath just for a moment. Then exhale while counting to seven. As we breathe slowly, hear the words of this poem. Let your God love you. Be silent, be still, alone, empty before your God. Say nothing, ask nothing. Be silent, be still. Let your God look upon you. That is all, God knows. God understands. God loves you with an enormous love and only wants to look upon you with that love. 
quiet, still be. Let your God love you. This poem is by Edwina Gately. Hebrews 10, verses 32 to 39. Remember those early days after you have received the light, when you endured in great conflict, full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times, you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property because you knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteous one will live by faith and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. On this night, we light this fourth candle to remember the stories of our faith. In faith, we are given life, breath, hope. God gives these gifts over and over again. Before these, there was a faithful one who created by forming from dust and by breathing. The faithful one who led his people by pillar of cloud and fire to give light so that people could see where and how to move forward. And the son of man who breathed life into dead bones to remind God's people of hope when all seems lost and the hope of light given that holy night when Jesus Christ came to earth, sent by the Father for the healing of brokenness to bring light to a dark world. We might not understand how our story fits into the bigger story of faith, we hold on to the stories of faith in God's word and the stories of faith throughout history. We remember early pandemics and the role that the church played. In ancient Rome, within the first 160 years of the church, the Antonine plague spread. Towns were abandoned, but Christians remained to care for the sick. They carried a message of hope and offered human relationship. The church grew from one million to six million. Just 60 years later, the Roman Empire suffered a second plague. Ancient documents describe that the Christians were unbounded in love and loyalty, never sparing themselves and thinking only of one another. Heedless of danger, they took care of the sick attending to their every need and ministering to them in Christ, and with them departed this life serenely happy. In Europe and Asia, during the bubonic plague of the 1300s, when most people left their loved ones for fear of infection, often Christians, monks and nuns, stayed behind. They washed the bodies, and comforted their sick neighbors. Finally, during the influenza epidemic of 1918 that killed between 20 million to 50 million people, Christian women were noted for taking care of orphans left behind. They provided them with food, clothes, recreational activities, and education. We remember the faith of our OCM founders and early congregation. When OCM's early churchgoers encountered racist hostility and physical harassment from the Italian Americans who felt a Chinese congregation was encroaching on their territory, 
the OCMers responded by praying. We give thanks for the communion of saints. We think of our brothers and sisters in our partner ministries in India, Thailand, Guatemala, and England. We are but one in a sea of lights. If difficult parts of your story linger, let it. Then take a deep breath. The Lord knows your whole story. You are seen. You are known. The Spirit gives you hope. Breathe in the story. Breathe in life. Let us pray. As we cry out, we know our faithful saints have cried out to you, Lord. Our laments are heard, therefore let us follow in the footsteps of these faith stories, following with our heartaches and the griefs we have at this moment. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John 1, 1-5 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. On this night, we light the fifth candle to remember that into the darkness the light came. Tiny and vulnerable, he came into the darkness. In his frailty, he embraced the brokenness of our world and the brokenness in each of us. While the world spat on, beat, crucified, and abandoned him, he never abandons us. Jesus is rock. His breath spirit in us can recognize and hear his breath spirit in others. The light that we carry in us recognizes the light in others because it is the very light of Christ. As we light the next candle, we draw more deeply into silence. We are more comfortable sitting with our feelings. They may still be there, but they do not keep us from breathing. Breathe in through your nose, counting to seven. Hold for a moment, and then release your breath, counting to seven again. Scripture reminds us of how we are to view the divine light in others. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Isaiah 42, 5-7 and 10-12 Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. 
Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that fills it, the coastlands and their inhabitants. Let the desert and its cities lift up their voice, the villages that Kadar inhabits. Let the habitants of Selah sing for joy. Let them shout from the top of the mountains. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his praise in the coastlands. We have acknowledged and named much grief. We have held it with our tears as an offering to God. We have released much this night. Jesus Christ beckons us to him that he might take our brokenness and piece it together in love. We are complete in him. This is where life is found. In Jesus Christ is abundance. This light shines for all the world to see. We set our eyes on Christ and we set our intentions on the Holy Spirit to guide us on our journey. The sixth candle that we light will be a candle of intention. Light this candle and remember to breathe. Breath has led you through this worship. Allow it to lead you. Think of it as an invitation to the Holy Spirit and a reminder to acknowledge all that you are feeling. Breathe in God's love. Hold your breath for a moment, then open your hands, and as you exhale, release fear. Breathe in God's love. Hold for a moment, then open your hands, and ex as you exhale, release anger. Breathe in God's love. Hold for a moment, open your hands, and as you exhale, release distrust. As you breathe and you feel your chest expand, let your arms stretch wide and up, let them fall to your sides, and keep your hands open, and open yourself to hope in Christ. And as you open yourself to Christ, stand and hold your hands open to worship and receive blessing. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Psalm 103, 2. Let this be a new starting point, a new place of grace. May our hearts be reformed in Christ. May we be empowered to fulfill the great plans that he has for each of us. As you leave this moment and go into the next, we must acknowledge the seventh light. This is Christ's light within you. You carry this within you always. This light is love as you are loved, grace as you are graced, hope as you are hope. This light is one that you can carry with you always. Colossians 1.27 reads, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this night and always. Amen.